If you want to get into the world of 3D printing and you're really confused, then this video is for you. First, let's go over choosing the perfect 3D printer for your needs. When you search online, you'll notice that there are a ton of 3D printers to choose from, and honestly, most of them aren't that great. So here are the top three 3D printers in the market today. You could choose between a very simple and very low cost 3D printer like the Creality Ender 3, or you could get a high quality mid-tier 3D printer like the Bamboo Lab P1S, or if you simply want the best 3D printer, you can get the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. Honorable mentions go out to the Creality K1 Max, the Prusa MK4, and the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. You can't go wrong picking any of these 3D printers, but if you do get the lowest cost budget Ender 3, just know it could be a little bit more work to get things printing. Getting a higher end 3D printer like the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon will save you quite a bit of headache and it prints faster. Next, let's take a look at some of the most popular materials that you can 3D print. By far, the most common and the easiest to print with is called PLA. PETG is the second most common and it's a little bit more heat resistant but is trickier to 3D print. And should you pay a premium for high quality filament like the Bamboo Lab filament, or is it okay to get away with some less expensive filament like Sunlu? In my experience, both these 3D printer filaments print equally as good. Now, how should you store your 3D printer filament? If you live in an area that is very humid, you may want to use some sort of dry box. The automatic material system of the Bamboo Lab 3D printers uses desiccant packs that remove excess moisture from the air. I live in Southern California, which has a Mediterranean climate, and I store 95% of my filament in open air. Just know that a dry box is not necessary in a lot of situations. When storing 3D printer filament, make sure to take the loose end and stick it through one of the holes on the side of the spool to keep it from tangling. Now let's go over the most important components of a 3D printer that you need to know the names of. The main surface that you print on is called the build plate or the print bed. The part where the filament is extruded is called the hot end and the material flows out through the nozzle. It's important to note that one of the most common issues with 3D printing is getting a clogged nozzle. Another common issue is improper bed leveling. Now let's jump into 3D printing at your first object. You can find tons of 3D models available to print on websites like Thingiverse. However, not all 3D models are created equal and some might be a lot more difficult to 3D print. In addition to helpful guides, our website 3dprinteracademy.com has a ton of really easy models to 3D print. Our most popular STL design is Threadboards, the 3D printable organizational system for everyone. Other great places to find STL designs include printables.com, colts3d.com, and a shout out to to JBV Creative. 3D printable objects are called STLs, and you'll need to prepare the STL for 3D printing before you can 3D print the object. You do this using a slicer. Depending on which 3D printer you choose determines what slicer you should use. For Creality 3D printers, you could use Creality Print. Bamboo 3D printers, you could use Bamboo Studio. For generic 3D printers, you could use Ultimaker Cura. And Prusa printers, Prusa Slicer. But what exactly does a slicer do? Well, here we have an object, and if we go ahead and click Slice Plate, you'll see exactly what it does. So right now it's slicing the object, which means it'll break it down into individual layers that the 3D printer will 3D print. If we preview the object, you can see all of the individual layers. This watering can will take about seven hours and three minutes to 3D print, and it'll cost about $5.56. Depending on the object, you may need to print the object with supports or without supports. This specific object is designed to not need any support material. Now that your object is sliced, simply go ahead and click print. And after waiting a few hours, hopefully you get a perfect print. Most newer 3D printers don't require any sort of calibration or complex setting up. And yes, this watering can is indeed watertight. I hope this helps. For more tips, tricks, and how-tos, check out my YouTube channel and website 3dprinteracademy.com.